Today is a very special day. You can do it! Hey guys, this is Dr. Adam Martin with The Fit Pharmacist, here with a special guest, my trainer for the past few years, Luke Probst. He is the training director for The Diet Doc. Um, as you guys know, I'm a competitive bodybuilder really into fitness, but as a pharmacist, or a healthcare professional or a busy professional, a lot of times time is an excuse or a reason why we can't get our workouts in. Uh, we might overthink it, thinking we have to do an hour of stretching, two hours of weights, and a half hour of cool down, and that adds up. Getting it all in um, can really lead us to there's no time to do it. So I figured why not ask the expert on training how to fit in fitness as a busy professional. So, Lou, thank you so much for being oh, here. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, can you just tell them a little bit about who you are, what you do, and why you're such a badass? <laughs> uh, uh, so, you covered a little bit of it. I'm Lou Probst. I'm the training director with the Diet Doc, and I have, you know, I have my master's in exercise science and a whole bunch of initials of different certifications: powerlifting, Olympic lifting, personal training, strength and conditioning, all that kind of stuff. Just because. It's what I love, so I want to learn as much as possible about it. Um, but really, it started off as I was too small to be good at football. And the coach said, he walked up, he's all, you're going to play varsity next year? And I said, yes. He's all, better hit the weights. Oh, and that was it. And so I've been doing that ever since. Uh, never so, stop, you know, coach. You know, 30 years stop. later. <laughs> yeah, so I've been doing it ever since and just fell in love with it and the process of it and the science behind it. You know, and so the more I learned, the more I realized I don't know very much. And so you just kind of start digging deeper into different ways to get stronger, get bigger, get faster, whatever it is kind of specific to your goal. And so I've just fell in love with that. And I, you know, I'm competitive myself in powerlifting and uh, just that's where it started was how do I get better? And then it turned into, well, I can use this to help other people get better too. And yeah. so it's just... That's just been my passion ever since. And it works, guys. I've been with them for three or four years now. Yeah, something, three. But it's, it's been phenomenal, uh, making it efficient workouts that get results. Um, I recently competed, and one of my areas of focus were bringing out my legs. And through Luke's training, that was like beyond where I thought they'd be. So very impressed what, with, with the results. The, it was funny because Adam said like his, his legs, what, what was it, the Soft. feedback you got? No, 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 after. Oh, after the four years. Um, we yeah, gotta, they were they were they were tight. We, we <laughs> overdid it a little. Now we got to get the rest of you to catch back up to them. Exactly. So, like the goal was met, I think. Yeah, over overshot. <laughs> overshot. Yeah, now we so. got to we got to work on it, bringing the rest up to match them, which is balance, proportion, is symmetry. Yeah. But yeah, turned my weakness into my overshadowing strength. So it was, it was a little a little ironic like I, there. I can't feel bad about that. No, 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 no not at all. Not after all the and, you, know, you know. I take zero credit. That's a lot of hard work in the gym doing what I wrote down for you essentially but like the work is and the time put in is there so it's just awesome to see it work yeah I mean and, and, and just follow the prescription the RX it's for fun. success really and the weights um, but it's been a blast now if you're a busy professional or you've got family and just fitting in a workout is just too daunting because anything over a half hour seems unrealistic or maybe you even feel guilty about giving that time for yourself um, so I have some frequently asked questions among busy professionals who uh, identify certain uh, limits, obstacles, or roadblocks that get in the way of them getting their fitness in. So looking at working out, um, that's the first question is how long should it take? Is 20 minutes ineffective? Do I have to do two hours? So that's the first question is how long should a workout take in order to be effective? Not necessarily for training for a competition or com anything like that, but just for general health. Right. So a lot of people have this myth that, well, I gotta go into the gym and I gotta warm up for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna get down and do my mobility work and maybe roll this out and, and, and go through this series of preparation drills and then I can start my workout. Well, that takes 45 minutes. Yes. And, and then you're gonna start working out, which might be another two hours. And so you're at a three hour workout, which that's okay if that's your job, you're a professional athlete, or if, if it's like your main hobby and form of recreation and that's all you do. Okay, we can make that work. 
but that's not necessary for health. And it's not even necessary for most performance goals. You can get a very efficient workout and reap the rewards of it in 15 to 20 minutes. Now, does that mean that 15 to 20 minutes is going to reach all goals? No. Like there are some things that are going to take more time. If you're interested, like if you're interested in competing in a sport, no, 20 minutes isn't going to cut it. But if you're interested in moving better, being stronger, chasing your grandkids one day, yeah, you can get a quite a bit of work done in 20 minutes. And there's nothing to say, depending upon your schedule, you can't do two 20 minutes. Interesting. Right? So like, you don't have to do it all at once. You no, can split absolutely. it up, like morning work session, evening session. So 20 minutes or two 20-minute sessions would be efficient in order to maintain or get to a healthy endurance cardiovascular level. Absolutely. And it, it, you have to be a little pickier with your time, right? So if I'm trying to just be healthy and strong and active, I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time doing seated hamstring curls, right? right? I'm going to get some more bang for my buck exercises, big compound movements, hit them hard, elicit a, you know, a response. I'm going to stimulate some response and I'm going to get out of the gym and I'm not going to roll around on the floor for 20 minutes beforehand. Right. Now, if you have specific areas that need to be addressed, you have you know shoulder tightness that you can't move properly, well, that's a different story. And now, maybe that morning 20 minutes is working on the shoulders, you get nice and loose, you're warm in the afternoon, and then you have your standard like half an hour, 20 minute workout that's more what you would think of traditional strength training. That can work too. There's no rule that says they all have to be smashed together in this marathon session. So you can get a good workout in 20 minutes, asterisk, you have to have proper programming in order to get the most effective, efficient workout, which is why someone like Luke comes into great play to structure that based on your goals, based on the time you reasonably have to get the results that you're looking for as an individual. Um, now, one of the things you said is a lot of people have that misconception of having to stretch or do mobility work for 30, 40 minutes beforehand. So. If you're looking at 20 minutes, some people might think, oh, well, then stretching is like useless, so why even do it? Like just save time there. So that comes to the next question, is stretching really necessary? And then there's confusion about when to do that, before you work out, after you work out, before weights, after cardio. So is it necessary? And then why and when do you do stretching? So the answer to most questions in the fitness realm is gonna be it depends. So is it's like pharmacy, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because it's still dealing with a human and a lot of times it's just going to depend. But is stretching really necessary? Well, if you have, you know, let's say for example, we're, we're both traveling around a lot, so we're sp spending a lot of time in a seated position. It's very possible before we work out, we might need to do some static stretching of the hip flexors because of the situation we're in right now. We're bent up all the time, they're gonna get a little tight if we're on a plane and traveling in a car. So in that case, maybe it is necessary. Maybe, yeah. let's see. When you start doing, you wanna warm up appropriately before you work out. That isn't just, in my mind, jump on the treadmill and increase blood temperature, or blood flow and body temperature. Though that's a part of it. What I like to do in my warm up, to, again, to be more efficient with my time, is do certain movements that simulate what I'm gonna do in my workout. And then I'm going to know, man, my hip flexors feel really tight. I can't even get into my normal positions. Well, now, now I do need some stretching. So warm up specific to the movement. So if it's an upper body day, not necessarily do hip rolls. Right. But if you're doing deadlifts, you might want to check, you know, hip mobility. And like you said, listen to your body. If there's feedback that you've got some tightness, that's a signal that you need to work on that area a little more. Absolutely. Before you start looking at one, two, three, four, five hundred pounds. A good, right. A good warm up is not just, and though it needs to do these things, you need to warm up. You need to increase blood flow to the working muscles. All that stuff needs to happen. But it also needs to be a little bit of diagnostic testing. Yeah. If I'm gonna deadlift and I'm gonna try and get a large amount of weight on my frame, I need to make sure that my body can get into the positions it needs to. So if my hip flexors are too tight to allow my pelvis to be neutral, it's pulling them forward, well, my back is gonna be an increased risk of injury or at least strain, so I better fix that, be able to get to neutral, and then I'm gonna go do my deadlift. 
So if we're really short on time, maybe I'm not deadlifting that day. Maybe that's not the day you know, I can adapt my program if, I'm, if time is really of the essence and I don't have time to deal with this problem, I might pull from blocks then so I don't have to get in such a deep position, mm -hmm. just as a random example. But there are different ways to approach it. If that, like if you're, you know, you gotta get to the pharmacy necessarily or whatever it is you're doing, maybe we need to make on the fly adjustments to make sure that we're not putting ourselves at risk. And it's good to do that if you have a good training director <laughs> so that you're you can have those options that. yeah exactly so you have that um, not necessarily black and white this is how it is but this is the general structure with the flexibility to divert if you need to right um, which brings me to the next question so we talked about warming up how about cooling down a lot of times people say you know walk on a treadmill five to ten minutes after your workout a lot of lactic acid to release so if you're trying to save time, can you just cut that out, or what is it really that necessary, or will tell us about cooling down? So cooling down, I do believe, is very necessary, but that's when you do your stretching. So if you're someone who generally has tight hip flexors, but you're, they're not so bad that you can't do your lift, you don't need to static stretch them before. But for a five minutes max, you don't need a 20 minute cool down. I think that's just that's a waste of time, even if you just have time, there's no need. Yeah. But so cooling down, you're trying to get all that blood that you shoved out into your legs or arms, whatever body part you're using, you wanna bring that back kind of to the center. It's because if you jump in your car immediately afterwards, it can kind of pull down in the legs and that's not something we wanna have happening. We wanna get blood back to the middle. So some gentle static stretching is a great way to let our heart rate come down, blood start getting back to the center around our organs and where it should be most of the time. So that's when I get my static stretching in. I don't, I don't do static stretching before. I know I kind of jumped over this. You don't do static stretching for a muscle you're gonna work before your workout. You can reduce force output, unless you're in a dangerous position and you gotta, you gotta deal with mobility restrictions. So again, it really does depend. And if you're not sure, find a coach that can help you determine those things. I know one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it really does depend. But in general, for a cool down, do some static stretching of the muscles that you worked, let your heart rate calm down, let the blood kind of get back into the middle where it should be, and you're pretty good. It doesn't have to be this long drawn, I, I don't think I've ever like got on a treadmill after a workout. I right. do some static stretching, let myself calm down, I'll lay on the floor and do some breathing practice to kind of like bring everything into a calm state, I think mm. that's valuable if you have the time. If I'm rushed, I don't do that part, but I'm still gonna hit, like if I'm doing a chest workout, I'm gonna do some static stretching of the pecs before I get out of the gym. Yeah. I'm not gonna do everything. I'm not stretching my calves afterwards necessarily. Yeah. Like, again, kind of a waste of time. Unless it depends that I have some really tight calves and they need some daily attention. Right. So in general, I'm gonna stretch what I worked real hard, let it kind of calm down, get blood flow back to where it should be. So cooling down, yes it's important and essential for the workout and long-term safety and growth, five to 10 minutes, and make it specific <laughs> and simple to what you are working and what your goals are, and it depends. <laughs> right, right. So then people can jump into the question, well, like, I wanna do what's most effective, what's best. So they look at Tabata or FST7 or 10 by 10 German volume training or other lifting protocols. So is there a best, is there a best lifting protocol for There's someone that's trying to be efficient? Uh, so there is no best. Because the saying goes, what's the best program? The one you're not on, yep. right? There are strengths and weaknesses to everything out there and everything I can create, everything that can be created is gonna have strengths and weaknesses in general. And then when you would try to apply it to a specific person, this great program on paper might be garbage right here, but amazing over here, Yeah. right? So there has to be some level of individualization to the individual lifter that you're talking about and the situation that they have. If you're short on time and you have 37 minutes to work out before you gotta hit the shower and get to work, you're not doing German volume 10 by 10. That's like a two hour thing, yeah. which if that's your thing, go for it and do it, but it doesn't fit this situation. Even if it was the best program for you, you can't finish it. It's not realistic. It's not realistic, it's not gonna work. So the first thing I do when I'm trying to talk to someone, we're talking about setting up a program for a block, is not look at what is best physiologically. 
It's what's the most realistic to actually get done consistently. Yeah. That's the only trick, being consistent. Getting the work done every time over time is what's going to get you to your goal. Not like sifting through the, the reams of information on the internet and finding what's best. Right. If you work hard at a subpar program, you're going to do better than if you have the best program in the world, skip half of it, kind of half-ass it. It's not going to work very good. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, you know, on paper, the best possible thing you could create for you. So it depends on you guys. It depends on what your goals are. We can realistically adhere to on a long-term status. Big right there. Goals. So my goals are different than his goals. So our programs don't look anything alike. Right. Even though I wrote both of them, they're different based on what his goals and what he needs are. Like before, we needed some legs. Yeah. Well, now, uh. now even his program is going to change significantly, whether if time available changes or now goals change a little bit because now we got to bring up the other side. So it can't be the best program because even if it was in six months, it's no longer the best anymore. Exactly. So the, the people get caught up like, oh, I got to research the best. Stop it. Find something that fits you, fits the time you have, and it fits your goals. Kick its ass for a couple months. So being specific is real important, guys. So that's why, like, word of caution, if you see, like, a magazine with workout or a celebrity that's like, oh, I did this and it was amazing. Like, you got to be careful <laughs> And have someone that's a professional that's trained that can customize and communicate with you what your goals are and use that expertise to fit where you are to get you where you want to go, which is, again, why Luke is so phenomenal, why I've been with him for so long, is he takes that time to learn your system, your history, where you're looking to go and works with you so that it's customized, not just a cookie cutter, dump it, here you go, deuces type of deal. <laughs> Because that's what the majority is out there is, you know, oh, I found this workout on, you know, in, in Vogue or, you know, this was in Men's Health. Uh, you know, this guy did it, so I want to look like him, so I'll do that. Well, he didn't start at the same place you're starting from. His goals were different. The time frame, his schedule, all those things need to be taken into account, which is why it's so important to look at all of those variables. Um, which brings me to another thing. <laughs> Most people, and I'm sure you hear this all the time. Most people, when you say, like, why do you want to work out, or I need to work out because, I just want to get toned. I don't want to get strong. I don't want to get too bulky. I just want to tone. So that's a common reason or motivation for people to get into workouts or take their workouts more seriously or consistently. So when it comes to lifting or working out, there's a common bro science mainstay where if you want to tone, you just do the low weight high reps, that'll get you leaner. But if you do the high weight low reps, that'll get you stronger. Can you address that, whether that's true or false? Uh, what is toning? And then <laughs> what, what a good rep range is. So if you're looking for a certain goal, you hit this rep or that rep when you're doing an exercise. So there's this, a lot of this is relatively new research because people want to know like the answers to this stuff. Mm -hmm. And some myths die hard and you got to like really just root them out with some good, hard, solid science. So there's a lot of people doing that and I love to read them and figure out what's going on to get like into the dirt. But it's funny that you say toning, like to an exercise scientist, there, there's no such thing as tone. Like muscle tone is a totally different thing than what people use it for. Yeah. But on the other side of that, everyone knows what you mean. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's, there's like this pretentious side that's like, well, you can't, that's not toning. Like you're using, okay, we know what you want. Yeah. We, we know what you want. So you want to look sexy. Right. That's all exactly. You want to look good when you're out an evening gown and there's a shoulderless dress or something like you know we know what you mean so yeah i try to wear those too <laughs> <laughs> but the myth that and, and i will say this is a myth that light weight high reps is going to tone you and working on more of the strength spectrum is going to turn you into arnold accidentally okay that is just not true you can build muscle with very with light weights and you can build muscle with very very heavy weights the difference is in the total volume and how you program it. But if you use very, very heavy weights to build muscle, 
takes a lot of time because mm. you have to rest longer in between sets. And so to accumulate that total volume, if I'm doing sets of three or I'm doing sets of 10, for me to get to 50 reps, that's pretty quick. It's going to take me a long time. We're talking like an hour and 15 minutes just of the one exercise. Yeah. To accumulate the same volume, I can get in eight minutes. So from an efficiency standpoint, you can find relatively the best. But it doesn't mean that other ways don't work. Because if you do with a very low weight set, we're talking, you know, from on an intensity scale, 100% is the most you can lift for once. 0% is nothing and you could lift it all day long. We're talking like maybe 30, 40% middle, having a very efficient way of accumulating that same volume, get in, get out, get your results. Right. So again, it depends. My goal is that strength side. So I slide and hang out over here on that end. But that doesn't mean my clients do necessarily. Some of them do. And sometimes there's a mix. You don't want to only do one thing always. You can kind of mix and match where it fits and where it's appropriate. But there is no toning weights and that's gonna like magically do something different, right? Muscles adapt. They will respond to the stimulus you give them. Right. So if you're gonna try and hand me a pink dumbbell and think I'm gonna get stronger, well that doesn't work very good. <laughs> but you could give me two of them so it's a little heavier and tell me to do a bazillion reps to failure, I can grow muscle with that. Yeah. And I'm not gonna look any different, right? I'm still gonna get the same result. It just might take a lot longer, be a lot more boring for me. Like psychologically, that's not gonna be fun for me. The this side, This side's fun, this side for me isn't. But some people don't wanna lift really heavy. Maybe that's not their thing. They don't wanna strain like that. Okay, you can do it more in this moderate range and still get the same results. So you are not bound to one or the other. It's actually better to kind of have a mix in there. We want some heavier stuff. We want some middle. It's good to have some light high rep stuff. That's probably, if there's a best, that's probably the best way. So it's not a black or white answer. It it's a, <laughs> right? It's it a It's a myriad or mix based on you as an individual, which again, why having a quality coach and not following a cookie cutter plan is so essential to getting you the results because what this is all about is how to be efficient with your workouts. So if you're in, you know, specific to you as an individual, you're gonna get there a lot quicker because it's customized to you rather than someone else's plan. Um, so that's kind of the, the main takeaway. Now, talking about weights and cardio, a lot of people are like, well, I need to cut back, so do I really need to do just weights or do I really need to do just cardio? If I do just cardio, I won't risk becoming man-like for the ladies out there who are, are you know, intimidated by the weights um, whether that's just being around a lot of men lifting or they f have that um, misconception thought of lifting weights will make me manly because men lift weights and therefore they are men or some sort of association with that. So do you have to do cardio and weights? What are the benefits to doing just one or both? When we're looking at eliciting a response, you don't have to do both. I'm not going to say don't do cardio because there are a lot of health benefits to it. So the, the, I do believe that there should be some form of that, but it doesn't have to be, oh, I got to slog away on the treadmill. I walk my dog. My heart rate increases. I'm walking kind of fast. That's my cardio from a health perspective. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking my dog. I get outside. Those are all good things from a, like a human being standpoint. Right. So there are a lot of ways to get some extra movement in, with it, which I think is important. But that doesn't mean I need to, if I got 30 minutes, 15 is not on the treadmill and 15 on the weights. I'll do that separately. I can have that as a separate session. That's a different timing type of thing. I'm going to focus on the weights necessarily, and then cardio can be a separate thing a couple times a week for the health benefits. So I can't, I can't with good responsibility say never do any cardio. I don't think that's smart. Right. But from just trying to change your physique, you don't need it for that. That's going to help you more there. But, and the, the thought that I'm going to pick up some non-pink dumbbells and accidentally have shoulders this wide. Oops. And yeah, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> if it was an accident, if it was an accident, you'd have to sit over there because I'd be three feet wide of pure muscle. It doesn't work like that. There are some 
and, and it, this is usually kind of like a female oriented kind of fear mm -hmm. usually I think there are some women that just can naturally build more muscle than others because of their hormonal profile so it, it, so it, it can happen sort of but it's not accidental and you don't wake up one day and it went off and you didn't realize it was coming so if you start building a little too much muscle than you are comfortable with you tone down exercise in that area it's it there's nothing and it'll go away like it's not you're not stuck like that forever it's not a trap you can fall into um, but the other side of it is it's really hard to make that happen especially if you don't have kind of like a bunch of testosterone like guys tend to that's why they we can get bigger especially like through the upper body yeah there's just more res receptors for it like through the shoulders and stuff but it's a hard process that you have to fight for. This is not an accidental thing that's going to happen and you wake up upset. So people don't accidentally become bodybuilders? No, no. <laughs> you're not going to... For years with intention? Right. People, <laughs> see, people see, like, pictures on magazines and things like that. Like, oh, that's too much. Okay, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like that or want to look like that or whatever. And it won't accidentally happen to you if you pick up some weights and work hard. It takes very specific amounts of training and time and usually hormonal stuff going on there to create that kind of, a, of, a, of an effect. But you know what weights will do without turning you into Arnold accidentally? Make you move better, make you feel better. You'll have a better quality of life farther into your life. Burn fat like, easier. Burn fat easier. You get a more efficient machine. Chasing your kids when you're a grandparent is going to be a lot easier if you're strong and healthy and the bones are strong. Like the benefits of exercise are myriad. I mean, it's it's, it's going to be here huge. quite a while. Dude, sure. we, let's start getting the whiteboard yeah. out and listing them. It's insane how beneficial it is. And to let an unfounded fear of accidentally getting too big stop you from all these positive life benefits documented right and it's not just like oh i think it does this proven we could pull out studies after studies after studies it's huge it can improve every part of your life it can improve your thought process depression like all that stuff can be helped I'm not saying it cures anything don't get me in trouble <laughs> but it can help tons and tons of stuff it's in, it's insane the funny part about it is you can do it wrong like you can pull something out of the the back page of an awful magazine, but if you bust your rear end on it, you can make a lot of really positive benefits. That's how great it is. You can even mess it up, and it's still pretty darn good. It's kind of as like long pizza. As you're consistent. Like yeah, pizza. even even bad pizza is still pretty good. Yeah, but it's kind of a silly analogy, but that's how powerful exercise can be. You want strong muscles? There's nothing that hurts. Right? Like, oh yes. no, I'm too strong to carry my groceries. <laughs> like, oh, I got too strong accidentally. It's horrible. Yeah. Now, maybe you don't need to be strong enough to squat 500 or bench 315. Okay, you don't need to. Don't spend that much time trying to get there. That's okay. Exactly. But you're not going to be upset that you're strong enough to do stuff you didn't expect. One of my favorite things in working with, and it, it especially seems to be so beneficial for young girls mm -hmm. because they have so much negative, oh, like, yeah. what does your body look like stuff just coming at them all the time. Body image, competition, oh. judgment, all of those. It's, it's insane. I can't, I, ha I have a daughter and I worry about how that thing, those things are going to negatively impact her psyche. I don't know. I'm not even close to having kids. I'm worried about it. But when I, I work with you kind of like older teen, young ladies, and they come in very timid in the gym and you get them training and you get them to be able to appreciate what their body can now do rather than only what it looks like. It's empowering. It's a really powerful thing, especially when you ask them to do something and they say, I can't do that. And then you show them that you've gotten stronger and I added weight without you knowing it and now you can do that. You used to not be able to. And now you can. And so what we have here is a scene of, I used to not be able to do this. And then I worked hard. And now I can do this. Not what I look like or feel like, but what I, my body is capable of performing. And that's huge. It gets you out yeah. of this, I feel, it seems like. It gets you out of this like just constant cycle of appraisal of how your body looks. And you can just appreciate stronger now. I feel better. I can do more if I had to do it. It's kind of like nice body, but what can you do with it? Um, a lot of times I see people who 
never went to the gym and they can't do a push up or a pull up, but they are consistent and do that. And just that one pull up doesn't even have to be oh, weighted. Just, dude, it's the, huge. The first pull up for a lot of female clients is like the Nobel Prize. Yes. I mean, it's so empowering to say there was this thing I could not do and I worked my butt off and now I can do it. That's my, no one can take that from you. You can't subjectively steal that. It's objective. And no one gave it to you either. Only you Earned were it. able to get that through consistent work. And that so. doesn't take three hours a day, seven days a week. If that's your job or if it's your main deal, go for it. I work out long periods of time because it's my thing. But that doesn't mean you have to or, and especially I kind of think the main topic we were getting at, it doesn't mean that if you don't have that much time, you just can't. Like what time you have, what time you can create and carve out and set aside in your schedule with a proper thought process and plan, you can make a lot of progress with it. Even if it's less time than you think you need. We can do a lot with short periods of time. You really can. Yeah. You just got to be more precise with what you do in that time. Exactly. So being consistent with those things. Um, having a specific plan from a qualified coach like Luke <laughs> uh, will help you to get there in a shorter amount of time than you would think it would take. So, safety. Yeah, it's safety too. <laughs> so long term, it's not just you know getting ready for spring or summer for the bikini, but long term health because you only get one body, you're going to be 50, 60, 70. What you do now is going to affect that. Kind of like financial health. Like if you start saving now versus waiting until like next year you retire and like, oh shit, I didn't do anything. So, you know, putting that investment in now, being consistent with it, um, those are really the keys and sticking to it on a basis that is realistic for you because we all want to work out every day, but if that's not realistic, we don't want to set ourselves up for failure. We want to set something realistic that does push us a little um, beyond our comfort zone, but that we can stick to on a weekly, daily, monthly basis so that over time those results will compound and then those goals will probably change and we reassess them, um, which you do successfully with a coach like Luke. <laughs> so, um, Luke, tell us about how people can get in contact with you if they want to talk about how to take that short time and maximize it so they get the most um, benefits from that time. Sure. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Luke E. Probst. I'm on Instagram, Luke E. Probst at PST, which is predator strength training and also you can my email is probably the easiest way luke at the diet doc simple and just dot com dot com yeah sorry uh just reach out and ask questions like this is you can't get me to shut up about this stuff once you get me going it's kind of funny like I don't, yeah i don't really like talking that much when you ask 20 minutes right <laughs> you ask me a training question i'm all ah, i'll go all day so if you have questions ask if it's a more involved question, we can deal with that and maybe talk about programming and stuff like that. But if it's a simple thing like, what exercises should I do when my hips hurt and I, but I still wanna get stronger legs because I wanna chase my granddaughter around one day. Okay, like, this is easy, we can get into this. So yeah, please reach out, ask questions. Uh, there's a YouTube channel, The Diet Doc Weight Loss, where I have my own like split of videos that talk about They're exercise, good. technique, and. And I, and I try and focus on like little tweaks to make things better for you. Cause there's, there's millions of videos on how to do something, but sometimes you need a specific angle for you that can kind of adapt it a little bit. And so there's good stuff there too, I think. Absolutely. Any last words of wisdom for people looking to fit in workouts into a too busy schedule? So it's easy to use it as an excuse, but it's also easy for me to say that. Like some people's schedules are legitimately crazy. Corey. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but she fits it in, right? So does that mean she trains six days a week like she used to when she was competitive bodybuilding? No, she's changed the priority of those, but it's still in her week and it's scheduled and it gets done on a schedule, right? So look at what you have, like legitimately, not like, well, I don't want to give up any Netflix time because, okay. Game of Thrones. Right, yeah. Which, when that comes out, I might take a little break myself. But, <laughs> but in general, like really, what do you have time for? block it out, set aside something, and then we can set up a plan that you can really push yourself, even in these tiny little blocks if they have to be tiny, and you can make some progress. So guys, you can make time or you can make excuses, but you cannot make both. Getting those results you're looking for come from strong support 
and science-based wisdom from someone that walks the walk and you know the talk is really in what you do um, so working with someone I highly recommend Luke uh, feel free to reach out to him Luke at the dietdoc.com you can also go to my website thefitpharmacist.com where a lot of his resources are there as well thank you guys for tuning in this has been Dr. Adam Martin of the fit pharmacist with coach Luke Probst thank y'all for tuning in have an awesome rest of your week